Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for tomorrow from a betting perspective. And for those of you that are here for the first time, we take a very contrarian approach to um, all things wagering, um, whether it be my, my real career, uh, analyzing stocks, or betting on pretty much anything where there is a VIG. Uh, I find that the best approach to this, which I've been using for mil 20, for tens and tens of years, um, is to not worry too much about trying to out-analyze the field, but more try to figure out where the psychology of the field is headed. In other words, what of a line is driven by bias? What part of a line is driven by public perception? And the idea is that if you could fade that public perception and fade that recency bias, you're probably getting uh, some good implied value. And that actually applies to all forms of wagering from, again, from MMA wagering all the way down to stock market stuff. Like if you find a stock that is, you know, something that's a really easy story to tell and just it looks really, really like the public is all over the, the one particular narrative involving the company, it's probably not a great buy because it's all probably priced in. Um and specifically to MMA, I find it's it's a pretty intriguing approach because one thing, because well, we do play a lot of props uh, in addition to the straight bets, but I find that that MMA gamblers really take a binary approach to these fights. I mean, they, they people get set on the fact there's only two ways a fight can go, and that's simply not the case. So if you could identify where the public is sure the fight's going to go, I promise you that those, those paths are overvalued. So you should never, ever be playing them. Um, what you should be trying to do is find the, 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 the paths to victory, which are possible, but for some reason are just getting dismissed by the growing narrative. And, and one of the reasons why I wait until later on in the week to do this is um, I need to get a sense of where the public is kind of leaning. Um, I, you know, I, I watch a little content. I just, I read a lot of, of different takes and, and, and I'm usually able to find some really heavy consensus uh, one way or the other, either on fights or on, or on methods of victory or whatever. And we've done a really, really good job fading those. Yeah. Um, so again, I mean, I can't promise you this is going to make, you know, make you money long-term. I can't promise anything, but I do promise that, that this approach is certainly going to be, um, I think this is this is the best EV approach to to MMA wagering. If you want to know the truth, and also what's fun about it is you're going to be on stuff that not that many people are. Um, so if you're you're sweating the fight with some friends or something like that, and like last week we had where it was we we had a not Albazi but some some dude at like four to one to finish that everybody was sure the only way he was going to win was going to be by decision. So the him inside the distance was completely inflated. Did I particularly have an opinion of whether he would finish inside the distance? No, but but I knew that that line was at least overvalued or undervalued. So that's the way we're going to approach this. And you'll you'll see when I go through my breakdown of these fights, it's not your usual approach. It's not your usual type of analysis. But this is the same type of analysis you'll get if I analyze sports betting, which I've done um, when I've done my true DFS content and we talk about the the wagering aspects. You'll see. I mean, it's just a very, very contrarian approach, which has just worked for me for a long time. And I do promise you this. If you get used to thinking about wagering in this way, it's just going to make you sharper overall. You'll be less on the square side of things and more, you know, it's, it'll, I think it really will turn you into a smarter, better. So anyway, let's get into it and let's get into the rules. The rules are is that we are going to be betting every fight and we're going to be betting every fight one unit. And for me, one unit is $180. I'm just being completely transparent about it. I'm also transparent about the fact that it's probably not the greatest idea to bet every fight in general, but you know what? We're going to have fun, you know, and that's, that's, that's the reason why I bet on MMA. It's really not to make money. It really isn't. It's really to have fun. And as long as you're going to have fun, you may as well put yourself in a position to make money. Okay. So we are going to be betting though. Every fight, we're going to be at a 180 per fight. You're going to see me actually put these bets in. The other thing I will also promise you is that, you know, is, is that it's likely that you, lose more fights than you win. But um, you are going to be probably on some long shots. You are going to be on some undervalued stuff, and it's going to be a fun sweat. Uh, okay, so let's get started. We have Zach Paugua against Modestus Bacausis. All right, this to me is 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 a really easy one to get a handle on because you have Bacauskas, who has who's everybody agrees is just much more technical than Pagua. 
and that he is just, you know, has a lot more experience. And Pogba came up from the, uh, I think the contender series or whatever, and he had just about the worst performance in a win that you could have. I mean, he wasn't even able to finish Jordan Wright, who basically everybody could finish, okay? So if you can't finish Jordan Wright, you're probably useless. So this to me, which to me, this is to the entire public, it's just kind of an easy Bukaskis, probably boring type victory. So for that reason, we're going to take Pagua, okay? Uh, if I really had any any balls, I would actually take Pagua inside the distance. Um, but I don't think I do. Let's see. Uh, because, again, the, the idea is that if Pagua can't finish Jordan Wright, he can't finish anybody, okay? Um, but let's take a look at the lines here. Maybe I will go for it. Pagua plus 160, that's obviously the, the safest bet to make here. But let's just take a look. Winning method. If we went Pagua, like, by TK or submission, it's plus 550. You know, we're going to do it. Pagua to win by TK or submission, plus 550 for 180. No, Literally nobody is on this. So this is probably going to be somewhat undervalued. The only, the only thing is that usually these, these, these unders are usually juiced in general, but I don't think in this particular case. So Pagua by TK or submission, plus 550 for 180. Okay, uh, moving on. We have Daniel Argetta versus Ronnie Lawrence. Um, so we have Ronnie Lawrence, who was just basically steamrolling everybody. And then in his last fight, he ran into Saeed uh, Kakramanov, and he got blitzed. And now he's up against Daniel Argetta. And I mean, I, this is kind of like reverse recency bias. See, normally what happens is, is people just really overweight of, of uh, a fighter's last performance. But today, in this particular week, they're doing the reverse. Everybody is so quick to giving Ronnie Lawrence a pass on that performance. And everybody is all right back on, on Ronnie Lawrence. Okay. Daniel Argetta, basically what everybody's saying is, yeah, he's a wrestler, but Ronnie Lawrence is just more well-rounded, right? And whenever you hear kind of like narrative crap like that, it's probably best to go the other side. So we are going to take Daniel Argetta plus the 160 for 180. And what we're going to do is um, here, 180. We'll end up doing stake all signals for 180. All right, uh, moving on. Teresa Bleda versus Gabriela Fernandez. Um, all right. Uh, this one, you are actually getting some love on both sides. Um, Bleda had a really, really good performance against Natalia Silva, and that uh, performance seemed to have aged well, which is another phrase that MMA people tend to use um, when they try to use MMA math. And I say, okay, she was okay against Silva, and Silva went up, beat, beat a lot of people, Hence, she's really good. Um, and that type of approach can be somewhat uh, can be somewhat uh, negative EV over the long run. Gabriela Fernandez, you're actually getting a little bit of of of, uh, of love for her because the idea is that is that Blada, while she's really, really good uh, grappling, uh, Fernandez is just so much better striking. So the idea is that people are actually playing a Fernandez by KO. And so what's happening is this. If you want to play anything in this fight, this is what you can't play. You cannot play Fernandez by KO because that's just going to be overvalued. You probably can't play Bleda by KO by by finish either. What you can do is probably play either of these girls by decision. Um, and this is going to be a real kind of bomb pick here. But I think what we're going to do is play. Gabriella Fernandez by decision because people are so convinced that if she can stop the take stop the takedowns, she's gonna get the KO, but it could go another way. I mean, she could stuff the takedowns and win a striking battle and not finish, you know. So let's take a look at some of these. So winning method, you have laid by decision plus 130. Nobody needs that. Um Fernandez by decision is plus 450. And this is going to seem counterintuitive. You're like, whoa, uh, it's, it's, it's cheaper than the Cabriel Fernandez by TKO. But I promise you, this is just bet by too many people. And this is just going to be overvalued. So we are going to play Gabriela Fernandez by decision plus the 450 or 180. Okay. 
Um, and, and again, for those of you that are following other MMA betting uh, shows, you're going to see that we probably have nothing here that's recommended by anybody. But I, I promise you, these are all probably long run good EV or at least better EV bets than the than the Moto Master of the Obvious plays, which I, you know, I'll remind you of what they are. But those are usually real square sucker bets. Uh, okay, Carlos Hernandez versus Dennis Bondar. All right, this one to me, uh, this is this is really funny because Dennis Bondar was coming off of like a bunch of wins against kind of like low level competition, and he went off as a big favorite against Malcolm Gordon, and he got wrecked in the first round. Now he did break his arm, but even so, you know, there people are noticing that he just got wrecked. So what that immediately did in everybody's perception is that it just invalidated all of, of, of his previous wins, okay? And yet, the line went up from Bondar at about a small underdog to Bondar at minus, one, minus 125. So for me, with all of the all the MMA Twitter geniuses saying that Bondar, this, he's basically a fraud, okay? Um, yet line is still moving in his favor, I mean, I've just seen a lot in my life, and 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 Bondar is probably just a lot. So we're gonna play Bondar. We don't know whether we're gonna play the minus one twenty five or inside the distance. I think Bondar inside the distance or Bondar by submission could be somewhat live. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So Bondar by submission is plus four hundred. I mean, that's pretty freaking juicy. Okay, so we are actually gonna try that. Bondar by submission plus four hundred. Or 180. All right. Um, okay, moving on. We have Kyo Gyo Kang versus Christian Quinones. Um, so Ko Ho Yang is called Mr. Perfect. They're saying that he's very, very technical. Um, but he's getting up there in age. Uh, quite honestly, I don't really have much of a lean in this fight. You're getting some love on both sides of this. So what we're going to do is we're not going to pass because, you know, listen, passing is for, you know, passing is for the week. So we are going to do something. What we're going to do is we're going to put this kind of off to the side and we're going to do a parlay with the guy, with all the guys we don't really have an opinion on. So what we're going to do is uh, my actual opinion on this fight is, is Quinones. So we're going to put him off to the side of say Quinones minus 135 is going to be in a parlay. And we don't know exactly where that's going to be yet. So, Yes, it's not an official contrarian pick. He just happens to be who I like, which really, I don't have much of an edge there. Um, we will put it in some kind of Hail Mary parlay at the end of this. Okay, uh, moving on. Jimmy Flick versus Alexandro Costa. So you have Jimmy Flick, who was coming off of a big layoff and just looked horrible in his last fight coming back. Okay. Um, and people are saying that he's basically submission or bust. And Alexander Costa, if he could just kind of survive his submissions, he should basically just kind of take over in the second or third round. So what I'm going to probably do is just bet for this fight to go to decision, okay? Because it's either flip, well, I've heard it's either flip by submission or Costa taking over late. So we're just going to bet on this fight to go to a decision. Um, so fight lines, where is this? Uh, was it fight props? Fight goes the distance plus 240 for 180. I don't know exactly who's going to win, but I think uh, fight goes to the distance for 180 makes sense. I, I mean, you could say to play Costa inside the distance, but they think there are worlds where Flick does, you know, take him down a bunch of times and win a decision. I don't think it's likely. But I think it's it's kind of safer to do it this way, just plus the 240. All right, moving on, we have Nicholas Dalby versus Muslim Solikov. Um, so essentially you have Solikov, who is a low-volume striker, and Dalby is sort of low-volume as well. And this kind of rates to be kind of a slow, kind of a slow fight where Solikov either gets him out of there late. Or maybe, maybe Dolby can grind out some kind of decision. Um, the 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 side that is really not being played is Solikov early. So let's just take a look at that. And if we could play, say, Solikov in round one, 
let's say we can get like six, seven to one. That's something worth looking at. If we can't get that, we probably will pass on the fight. Let's see. Uh, winning method. Actually, we're going to do round props, right? So, yeah, so round one plus 380, that's just not going to be good enough. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take my opinion on this fight, and then we are going to just um, uh, include it in a parlay. So my opinion on this fight is going to be um, a Salikov just by, you know, probably just by decision. So uh, we're going to include that in a parlay. But again, no real contrarian take there. Uh, okay, moving on. We have Manuel Torres versus Nicholas Mota. So this one, again, is extremely, it's, well, so it's really easy for me. You have Torres, who's kind of a wild man, and Moda, who's going to bring it in the center of the cage. And the easiest narrative of all is that we don't know who's going to win, but they're just going to slug it out, and this fight's going to end in the first round and a half. So anything involving either a Moda knockout, a Torres knockout, or anything like that is really, really low it's really, really been juiced. So what's not been juiced are something with the over or specifically either of these dudes by decision, okay? So we think that this fight is going to finish in the first round and a half, but if it doesn't, slowly but surely it becomes a little less likely to finish. And then you can get one of these dudes by decision and, and you look at these, Moda... Let's look at this. Moda winning method. Mo Torres by decision is plus 600. Moda by decision is plus 1,000. Um, you actually are getting a little bit better value on Torres. I mean, considering that Torres is going to be like, you know, uh, you know, maybe like a two to one favor or close to it. This is actually, you're getting pretty good price here. So we're going to take Torres to win by decision, which is really something you're not seeing. I did see a couple of semi-sharp takes on a Moda by decision, but I don't see any Torres by decision. So we're going we're gonna to go with this one. Torres by decision plus 600. So, so far it looks like we're going to be going 0-9, but we'll, we'll see. I promise you in the last fight, I'm going to give you something to get all your money back. All right, uh, moving on. We have Pat Sabatini versus Lucas Almeida. So Lucas Almeida is seriously the most popular underdog I've seen in about six months. I mean, for a two to one favorite, what Sabatini is, I'm basically seeing more than, you know, 70% of the action coming on on Almeida. And uh, so with that said, we're not playing Almeida by, by knockout. We're not playing Almeida on the money line. What I'm hearing is that Sabatini is really just not much of a finisher that if anything, he just take him down and hold him down. So what we're going to do be doing is something with Sabatini inside the distance. Um, Sabatini by submission is probably going to be the, the place we can't play. Let's just take a look. Sabatini by submission is only plus 225. People are playing that. So what we're going to do is we are going to have a little fun. We're going to go past Sabatini specifically in round number two. Okay. Um, the other th way that I was going to play this, can we get away with this? Hold on a minute. Sabatini by KO is plus 650. So what that means is that what we will be looking for is him get him to the ground and then win by 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 uh, by uh, by club and sub. Coming off a loss, though, I don't know if he's going to be so fancy so we're just gonna play him in round two pat sabatini round two or one eight okay um just a couple more right yeah so armin petrosian versus christian duncan um this is supposed to be kind of a strikers versus striker uh, Armin really is, he's going to have a big reach advantage and he's almost never been finished and he's not much of a finisher. So what you're hearing is either a decent amount of Christian Duncan, you are getting some Armin Petrosian, but what you're not getting is this fight to go inside the distance. So that I think is the part of this, 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 uh, fight, which is undervalued. So let's 
we're gonna bet that we're gonna play Petrosian versus Duncan. Boy, if we really had it in me, I would play Petrosian inside the distance. Wow, let's take a look at that just just for fun. If you could get like eight to one, maybe I'll try that. Let's see. I think I can get it. Let's see, Petrosian by it's four to one. Nah, that's that's no good. We'll just we'll just bet the fight to when it's to uh to go inside the distance. Fight does not go minus one thirty five. And you feel as though, oh my god, this is a, this is not a, a big 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 number. But I don't think anybody's playing this. So it's like such a stupid bet. It's just probably going to win. And I think we're at the main event. So if you've been following what I've been recommending, you're very likely going to be going 0-9. Actually, oh, excuse me, we have two more fights. We have Arman Sarukian versus Joaquin Silva. You have Sarukian, who this is basically a fixed fight for. Um, he's a minus 1,000. And he can win the fight any way that he wants. Uh, so that is the, the narrative. So what does that mean? Well, what I've heard is that he's more likely to just kind of, you know, just, just, just kind of swarm him a little bit in the first round and then maybe win in round two and three. So for whatever reason, I do think that the that Sarukian in round one is probably undervalued a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, round props. Suruki in round one, you know, it's not a big deal, but we'll play it at pick them. Suruki in round one, get the one takedown and then kind of sub him just like that. All right. Um, so the main events, again, if you've been following what we've been saying, we have 12 fights, we're passing two, we're going to use those in a parlay. And then we have one, and, and so you'll probably be Owen's, what, Owen 12 or Owen 11? With one fight to go, so we got to get you get your eleven your your eleven losses back here. So let's take a look what we have. We have Marvin Vittori versus Jared Cannonier. So this is what we have. This rates to be a very boring fight with. Um, Marvin Vittori probably either winning on volume with some takedowns or Jared Cannonier possibly getting that KO power. So we can't bet any of that. We can't bet Vittori by decision. We can't bet Cannonier by KO. The only thing we can really do is either play Cannonier by decision or Vittori by some kind of finish. Now, I will say this. I have heard a couple of, of takes that Cadenier by decision makes sense, but I have searched far and wide and have not found a Vittori by finish. Okay. And yes, I don't think I've seen him finish anybody. So that's, there's that. And I don't think I've seen Cadenier get finished. So there's that. As they say in like the movie, sometimes it's so dumb. It just might work. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of these. We have Vittori by submission is plus 900. We have Vittori by TKO is plus 1100. What's the good thing about Vittori by, by KO? Uh, is that you can get our money back from the other fights. So that's what we're going to do. Vittori by KO plus 1,100 in the main event for 180. Um, so let's us uh, remind ourselves what we have. We have 10 bets here, and these are definitely going 0-10, okay? Like Pagua to win by TKO. I mean, this guy couldn't even finish Jordan Wright. You think he's finishing anybody, or especially with Kowski's? No way. But we'll play. We'll take plus 550 just in case. Uh uh, we're going to give Ronnie Lawrence a pass. Oh, everybody else is going to give Ronnie Lawrence a pass for his last performance. Not us. We'll take the Argetta plus the 160. He's covered everywhere, but why is it only plus 160? Find out. Gabriela Fernandez by KO is the super sneaky sharp play, but we're not super sneaky sharp. We fade those people too. We're going to play Gabriela Fernandez to win by decision plus 450. We have Bondar the Fraud, who's beaten nothing but gas cans 
Well, let's find out. Bondar by submission, plus 400, which is beautiful because in his last fight, he basically got submitted. So this would be perfect irony. Uh, Costa Flick, guaranteed. It's either going to be Flick submission or Costa KO late. Well, we're going to go with yes, fight goes to the distance. Manuel Torres, maniac. Can't even, if he gets, he's never even been out of the first round, I don't think. Um, and if, in fact, this does go deep, Moda's got the experience. So if anybody's going to win by decision, it's going to be Moda. So let's go ahead and take Torres by decision, plus 180. Uh, excuse me, plus 600. Sabatini, not much of a finisher. Well, let's find out. Round two, plus 600. Uh, Petrosian, Christian Duncan, Strikers Delight. Neither of them have ever gotten finished. So let's bet this fight goes, uh, does not go the distance. Uh, Sarukian can play with his food. He could probably get a second or third round finish. Well, it's going to be a round too late for us because we have him at minus 110 in round one. And then Vittori can't finish anybody. He's going to win a low, he's going to win a high volume, maybe with some takedowns. Cannoneer is tough. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but we got plus 1100 that says otherwise. And so we're going to stake all singles. We're going to put this in 180. Let's see what happens. Maybe it's going to let us do it right here. Let's see. So it's going to have to wait till I do off. Can't locate. And then I'm going to put in that part later. Those other two bets. Uh, that will do it. Uh, good luck, everybody. And I'm, again, I'm sorry again that you're going to go 0 and 10. But at least in the last fight, you're going to have a chance to get your money back. Good luck.